that'll give him something to think about. <laughs> this week on the premiere episode of At The Movies, we've got the early review of George Clooney and Brad Pitt and the Coen brothers burn after reading. What do you want from me? Vin Diesel is on the hunt in the action thriller Babylon AD, and you'll hear for the first time what the Critics Roundup has to say. Welcome, everybody, to At The Movies. This is your home for everything you need to know about the movies. I'm Ben Lyons of E! Entertainment. And I'm Ben Mankiewicz of Turner Classic Movies. We are the hosts of At The Movies. And Ben, you know, it's really amazing to note that this incredibly popular show began 33 years ago, starting, of course, with Gene Siskel and Roger Ebert. And their ingenuity really created the entire genre. Absolutely, really paved the way for us. And of course, thanks to them and Richard Roper, this is a legacy that we're really honored to be a part of. It's our privilege and great responsibility to continue the movie reviewing tradition. On our show and our website, atthemoviestv.com, we'll give you more reviews, more exclusives, and more critics from blockbuster films, must-have DVDs, to early reviews. So, let's get to it. Osborne, Osborne Cox. Who am I speaking to? You're part of a league of morons. We'll kick things off with an early review of Burn After Reading. How do you follow up No Country for Old Men? Well, if you're Joel and Ethan Cohen, you recruit some of the biggest and finest actors working today and make a comedy where they play five of the most spectacularly self-involved characters in recent memory. And they also happen to be wonderfully dim. If you ever carried out your proposed threat, you would experience such a storm of consequences that your empty little head would be spinning faster than the wheels of your Schwinn bicycle back there. You think that's a Schwinn? Francis McDormand and Brad Pitt are, naturally, fitness instructors at Hard Bodies, a gym in the D.C. suburbs. They think they've hit the jackpot when they find a disc belonging to a drunken ex-CIA analyst. He's played with violent bitterness by John Malkovich, who's married to Earth's least compassionate doctor, Tilda Swinton. She's having an affair with a U.S. Marshal, played by George Clooney. Is that goat cheese? Chevre. Yes, that is a goat cheese. Because I have a... Uh, a lactose reflux and I can't. You're lactose it. intolerant? Yeah, but or I can't. you have acid reflux. They're different things. I know what they are. So you misspoke. Well, thank you for correcting me. These are functioning morons. They walk and work among us. And they are brilliant and funny, and in spite of the screwball comedy nature of the story, they are completely believable. Throw in talented character actors Richard Jenkins, J.K. Simmons, and David Ray, who actually steals every scene he's in. And this is a must-see. Oh, absolutely. Definitely see it. It's great to see George Clooney and Brad Pitt having fun at the movies again. Last year at this time, they were Michael Clayton serious and Jesse stuff. James. Yeah. Serious stuff. Here they are in almost like an exercise in drama. It almost felt like all the actors picked their parts out of a hat, and they were stuck with it and made the most of it. And each one's talented enough to pull it off. Yeah, it's an interesting point. I, I particularly love Brad Pitt and Francis McDormand. And, and the fact that, that what they're seeking when they get John Malkovich's disc is not millions for fame and fortune. They just want plastic surgery so they can continue working at hard right bodies. and i think and i think brad pitt would need plastic surgery after john malkovich punches him in the face if someone said to you this is the same directing team that did no country for all men i wouldn't believe you unless you said it was the coen brothers those guys can seem to do everything my only real criticism of the film is that it wasn't long enough i rarely say that about yeah. movies <laughs> but i felt like i was in and out of there and i got out and i said well that was quirky and weird and surreal what just happened but they took sort of the quirkiness and the dim-wittedness they took it right up to the line i still think it worked it was close. There were a couple moments right. when I would think, nobody's that dumb, well, they really, but I still think yes, it worked. They really combined sort of intelligence and ignorance in this movie, sort of taking on all the CIA uh, espionage movies that come out from Jason Bourne films and sort of making a little pot shot at them. And I think Frances McDormand might get nominated for an Academy Award in a supporting role. She was great. I'd be surprised if this no, uh, movie didn't generate some yeah. nomination. All right, on to the next movie. Name me a bad Don Cheadle film, quick. That is tough. Uh, Ocean's 12. The Ocean's movies don't count. Well, that's because the actor and now producer has always managed to gravitate towards good material. And for the most part, it's worked out. This time around, he stars in Traitor as Samir Horn, a former U.S. Special Ops agent who is suspected of becoming exactly what the movie's title suggests. Don't you have a guy on the inside? He's gone silent. For all I know, he's gone over to the other side. Do you realize how far I've gone to protect your identity? Nobody knows you even exist. Cheeto is pursued by a methodical and persistent FBI agent, played by a Guy Pierce, and a CIA agent with a shadowy agenda, played by Jeff Daniels. Greatly influenced by films like the Bourne series and recent political thrillers, The Kingdom, Traitor is a mesmerizing look deep inside the war on terror. 
Carter, you put a tracker on me? Are you crazy? Yeah, I'm on a you. meet. Come with me. I'm on a meet, Carter. Its only limitations seem to lie in its comparatively smaller budget and the hiccups you get from an inexperienced first-time director, Jeffrey Nachmanoff. At times, yes, it is predictable, but it's Don Cheadle's uncanny ability to create a complete character, and not just an archetype, because that saves the movie. I say see it. I agree with you on Don Cheadle, Ben. Uh, he's wonderful, but the fact of the matter is the movie itself, I believe, fails. I'm going to say rent it just because Cheadle was so good. Cheadle is that good. At times, I do believe he's a terrorist, and at other times, I yeah. do believe that he's working for the U.S. government. I love these types of films. I thought it was real. It I, raised questions of faith, loyalty to government and to fellow man. I really did enjoy it. I, I like the idea of it. I like the effort. I like the attempt to be nuanced, to say the evil guys aren't always so bad and the good guys aren't always heroic. It was complicated. But but ultimately failed in that attempt to deliver a complicated message. Didn't you feel like they were holding your hand, tugging you along, telling you what to feel? I didn't find like, it to be hey, look, preachy at like, all. Look, hey, we're being subtle. Look at us being subtle. No, look at us being complicated. No, that's not subtle. I didn't find it to be preachy. I didn't think it spoke down to the audience at all. It raised real political issues for me. I felt the same way about this movie that I felt about Crash. Crash. The only thing one similar the, about these two, those two films is that Don Cheadle's in both of them. No, they tried to tell complicated stories. Crash, one of the most overrated movies in the past few years, and I think this is going to be overrated as well. You're comparing it to an Oscar movie. It's not overrated. It's just a good political action movie that makes you use your brain a little bit. No, it isn't. Oh, come on. Get with it, Ben. All right, coming up, What's Shakespeare takes a here? surprising it's twist it's with it's Hamlet it's 2. Next. Is this Vin Diesel's most explosive role ever, or is he just running on fumes? We'll review Babylon AD and hear for the first time from our Critics Roundup. Let me just say... We have to go now. No. We have no time. No. Yeah. Yeah. What is wrong with you? Make her walk or I'll carry Stop. her. Stop. Don't touch the her. Come no, don't gonna go leave. that way. We're going now. You will don't die. Touch her. Vin Diesel is back playing the kind of role we expect Vin Diesel to play in Babylon AD, the film version of a book called Babylon Babies. I honestly don't know much about the book, but I can tell you the movie is largely indecipherable, totally predictable, and stultifyingly dumb. Sorry, kids, these girls are with me. Just let her go to her. How do you know my name? You know a lot of things you don't know. Yeah, like what? Like you don't know what you're doing. I'm doing my job. Forget your job. What? One million, tax free. Babylon AD is set in the near future. Diesel plays Turup a mercenary who must safely take Aurora, a young woman with special gifts from Mongolia to New York, and since there aren't any direct flights from Ulan Batur to LaGuardia, Turab's mission isn't an easy one. What's wrong? It's a missile linked to my passport. With the post-apocalyptic theme and one scene setting that is nearly identical, this movie is reminiscent of Children of Men, except Alfonso Cuaron's movie is outstanding, while Babylon AD is unwatchable. Skip it aggressively. That is my take on the film. Let's go to our new feature, the Critics Roundup. We're opening it up to expert views and opinions from critics across the country. From IFC, we have Matt Singer, also Tori Shulman in Hollywood, and Wesley Morris in Boston, and of course right here in studio, Ben Lyons. All right, Wesley, we'll start with you. See it, skip it, or rent it? Uh, I'd say rent it. Uh, it's, it's not bad. It also has what you didn't mention, which is Charlotte Rampling uh, in a totally ridiculous role in, in the middle of what is also a ridiculous plot. I was entertained. I don't know. It's how, bad, but I mean... How does that make it a rent it? As bad goes, it's pretty entertaining. All right, Wesley, Tori Shulman in Hollywood, your thoughts. <laughs> it's a strange one, but I'm going to rent it if you have oh. a plasma widescreen TV and you don't want to think too much. Oh. Or, or enjoy yourself too much. Matt Singer in New York City. I'm shocked and appalled <laughs> Thank by you. what I'm hearing right now. <laughs> Thank you. This is a sci-fi action thriller with very little science fiction action or thrills. Skip it. Uh, ben Lyons, what do you say, bud? I unfortunately had a seat that faced the screen, <laughs> and I have two hours of my life that I will never get back. I I'm say so skip it. Matt, you uh, uh, brought this to our attention that uh, Matthew Kasovitz, the director, was uh, he didn't like the final cut at all and has gotten to a battle with Fox about yes. it. 
yes. justified? Yeah, well, he, he claims that uh, Fox took about 15 minutes out of his preferred cut of the movie, and that would explain some of the flaws that the movie has. The director is the guy responsible for the action scenes, and they are shot so poorly, and y I couldn't follow any of them. So I think the blame has to be shared here. You know, actually, from listening to Wesley and Tori, it sounds like if you added 15 minutes to it, they might have liked it even more. I'm not, I, I'm not uh, gonna lie. No, that I is think, definitely uh, not true. Let me just say, Vin Diesel in the right vehicle could be the modern day action star. He's charming. He's got a good act. You can but see he's a good it. actor. I was highly entertained by the snowmobile aerial chase shots, and I wasn't antsy. See, I, I, I disagree, Tori. I think that Vin Diesel should go and do comedies or family films or get out of doing action. I thought he was room. great in, in, in Find Me Guilty, or even for the kids, the Pacifier movie. Like, Those are better vehicles than any action movie he's oh. going to do now. You want your action you know, hero to be this. stoic, but you don't that. want him to look bored, which is, I think, what Vin Diesel does look a lot of the time. I mean, he makes Dolph Lundgren look excitable. <laughs> hey, Tori, you're the biggest defender of this movie. Did you follow the plot? Did you have no. any earthly idea what was happening there no, at the I end? No, I didn't know who these people were or where they were or why the woman playing Aurora was dressed in a J. Crew cashmere Heather Gray cardigan. Then why on earth are you telling people to rent this because movie? Because it was entertaining. If you just cram for a big test and you want to watch an action thriller and not be bored and not have to think, go get it. That's enough Vin Diesel talk for now. That's two for rent it, three for skip it. So overall, thankfully, we say skip it. Absolutely. Now it's time for our next movie. Ben, if you want to call it a movie, it's College. It stars Drake Bell from Nickelodeon's Drake and Josh. Now they say that imitation is the most sincere form of flattery, except when it comes to this movie ripping off everything from Animal House to Superbad. It was a waste of my time, a waste of my life, and please do me a favor, skip this movie. You know, Ben, I saw Babylon AD in the theater. I came out and I thought, you know, this might be the worst movie I've seen this year. Well, then 30 minutes later, I saw college. It looks like they're doing a really bad Jonah Hill, Michael yeah. Sarah, and Christopher Mintz Plass, known as McLovin, imitation. I thought it was dreadful from start to finish. None of the heart, none of the spirit, and 50 times the bathroom humor of a movie like Super And I don't know why Drake Bell can't find better material to go into the world of movies. His co-star from Drake and Josh, recently seen in The Wackness, Josh Peck, does a great job of seeking out sort of cool, quirky roles. This is just horrendous, insultingly terrible. Not only would I not see this movie, I wouldn't see any movie playing in the same multiplex. Coming up, more with our critics roundup from across the country as they take on Hamlet 2. Hamlet 2? Doesn't everybody die at the end of the first one? I have a device. The time machine opened, revealing Hamlet and Jesus! Good luck. Thanks, One of the most talked about films this year while I was out in Utah at the Sundance Film Festival was hands down Hamlet 2. Just imagine the scene of the Hollywood executives scrambling in the snow, trying to get a ticket, many of whom probably thought it was a sequel to the classic Shakespearean play. Because of its unwholesome content, the school cannot allow the exhibition of Hamlet 2. You can't stop art! You have Satan French kissing the President of the United States of America. The film lives up to the hype thanks to a star-turning performance from English actor Steve Coogan, last seen in Tropic Thunder. He plays a failed actor turned failed drama teacher who hopes to save a high school theater program in Arizona. So he decides to stage an original work, a politically incorrect sequel to the Shakespeare classic. For anyone who ever took drama in high school, Coogan's character will surely ignite memories of quirky, even downright crazy teachers you may have encountered over the years. There's also great supporting work from Katherine Keener, Amy Poehler, and Elizabeth Shue in a hilarious turn as, of all people, Elizabeth Shue. I challenge anybody who goes out to see the movie not to sing the words That's to Rock cool. Me Sexy Jesus for years to come. I say see it. That's my take on the film. Now it's time for the Critics Roundup. In New York City from IFC, we're joined by Matt Singer. Out in Hollywood, we've got Reels Channel's own Tori Shulman. From the Boston Globe, film critic Wesley Morris. And of course, here in studio with me, my co-host Ben Mankiewicz. All right, guys, what do you all think about Hamlet 2? Wesley, let's start with you. See it, skip it, or rent it? I'd say rented. There are whole stretches of this movie that are just totally dead, flat, flailing. Um, but it builds to Hamlet 2, the actual play, and that's pretty funny. Okay, Tori Shulman in Hollywood, your thoughts on Hamlet 2? I didn't find the play funny enough. I'm going to say skip it. I think it was trying too hard and became irritating. Matt Singer in New York City. See it, skip it, or rent it. You know, Ben, I'm with you on Hamlet 2, the play, but the rest of Hamlet 2, the movie, I'm with Tori and Wesley. I say skip it. All right, Ben Mankiewicz here in studio. Your thoughts? I say see it. Funniest Shakespearean yes. sequel since Richard the Fourth. All right, let's kick things off talking about Steve Coogan. Tori, is Steve Coogan the next big comedic star? 
Um, not from this vehicle. He didn't make any kind of lasting impression. I find Coogan a really funny, great character actor, but he fell really flat here. It's an ill-defined character, and yeah. I think he's sort of been allowed to go in a zillion different directions, and some of them are funny, and some of them aren't. I think of Steve Coogan yeah. movies, I think of smart movies like right. Tristram Shandy, and this right. is this is stupid. I mean, you know, getting his hand caught in the door, I mean, it's it's lame kind of pratfalls like that. I hear what you guys are saying. I, ultimately, I think you're being a little too tough on, on this film. I think you're being I mean, too, too the, light. A little too well, light. obviously you think that, but the fact of the matter is, what, could, could it have been better edited? No question. Was it a little sloppy? Was Steve Coogan too broad at times? But my theater, for example, there was plenty of laughing. All right, let's talk a little bit about the ensemble cast. Tori, did you enjoy at least Catherine Keener and David Arquette and Amy Poehler and Melanie Diaz? A lot of big names. I thought Catherine Keener was in her worst, most annoyingly written role of her life. It's, it's almost become a cliche. Yeah. She makes every movie better. But the fact is, she does make every movie better. While I hated her character, I still loved her. I thought she was in a totally you, different okay, movie than I mean, some of the other characters. She's in a completely different movie, absolutely. You know, Steve Coogan has a line in the movie where he says, you know, my life is a parody of a tragedy. And I think the movie can't decide whether it is a parody exactly. or it is a tragedy. And there are long stretches where it's not funny. It's actually pretty sad. Didn't you find it funny at all? I thought there where? were significant where? points that I were don't, incredibly funny. I don't think there's really a stretch where it's no. funny. I think it's, tr it's funny for a couple minutes. And then we move on to the tumbleweed. All right, there you have it, folks. We've yeah, got two see it's, one rented, and two skip it. So unfortunately, it looks like it's a split decision. Thank you guys so much. Please do me a favor and stick around. <laughs> Coming up, big stars to watch in the comfort of your own home. John C. Riley, Helen Hunt, Rachel McAdams. They're all Thank part of our DVD Out Now list. It's time to take a look at the movies and TV shows Out Now on DVD. Sean William Scott and John C. Riley vie for the promotion. Helen Hunt, Matthew Broderick, and Bette Midler star in Then She Found Me. Pierce Brosnan and Rachel McAdams enjoy Married Life. And everybody's favorite dysfunctional workplace, The Office, is out with season four. My DVD selection this week is Heckler, which is appropriate for our show as it examines the world of critiquing, commenting, blogging, and good old-fashioned heckling. Actor Jamie Kennedy, a victim of many a bad review in his day, I think Son of the Mask and Malibu's Most Wanted, to name a few, sure. sits down with an eclectic group of voices in pop culture to examine the increasingly critical and judgmental world in which we live. Bill Maher, Roseanne Barr, Carrie Fisher, and Coach Ditka are just a few of the names included in this honest, candid, and extremely well-made documentary that centers around what you and I do for a living, critiquing and examining art. My DVD pick is one that will make my friends at Turner Classic Movies happy, the great Paul Newman and Cool Hand Luke. The new DVD has some interesting extras. Mainly, though, it's an opportunity to see maybe the biggest star of the back half of the 20th century playing the kind of hero reflective of the 60s, a guy who won't stop, will not conform, no matter how desperate his circumstances. Newman is backed by an unbelievable supporting cast, including George Kennedy, in an Oscar-winning performance. How many eggs do you think he gets to eat in one sitting? Yeah, there's, there's a great thing on that DVD where they all guess how many he actually ate Oh, that's shooting fantastic. Yeah. Reason enough to get it. So, both Cool Hand Luke, Special Edition, and Heckler will be in stores on Tuesday. Want to know what you can't miss this weekend? Stay tuned for our three to see. And you've heard our reviews. What do you have to say? Give us your take on atthemoviestv.com. Plus, I'll be blogging all week long from the Toronto International Film Festival. Closed captioning for At The Movies is sponsored by... Next time, use the movie ticket stock card. It's fast, easy, and painless. Hotel provided by Park Hyatt Chicago. Chicago's award-winning hotel and luxury dining experience. Located in the heart of Chicago's magnificent mile on Water Tower Square. Okay, recapping the movies on this week's show. We both say see it for Burn After Reading. Opens next week. We split on Trader. I say rent it. Barely. Ben says see it. We both say please do us a favor. Go out and skip college. And the Roundup agreed. You can also skip Babylon AD. The Roundup had a split decision, though, on Hamlet 2. Now it's time for three to see our picks for the best three films in theaters right now. At number three, I was truly inspired by watching the modern artists featured in the documentary Beautiful Losers. The film profiles the current state of the art world and the voices that define it. At number two, I'll go with Tropic Thunder. This clever satirical skewering of Hollywood is one of the funniest movies of the year, and I think more than a few of those calling it offensive haven't even seen it. 
And the number one movie to see right now is Hamlet 2. This indie comedy will have you laughing and singing Rock Me Sexy Jesus for years to come. I agree with you on Hamlet 2. I still do not agree with you about Traitor in I'm any way. I'm sorry you're not into intelligent political thrillers with great performances. That doesn't really do it for you. Yeah, that's a fair recap of my argument. That's it for this week. Thanks for being with us for our first show. We enjoyed it. Hope you did as well. And remember, we're always online at atthemoviestv.com. We'll leave you with a quick look at movies we'll be reviewing next week, including Samuel L. Jackson in Lakeview Terrace. And until then, we'll be at the movies. Whatever it is about us that bothers you, you got to figure out a way to deal with this. Or what? Just be there for me, silently. <laughs> <laughs>